The day has come, Dying Light 2 finally has guns. Today I'll be showing you all the features added with this update and also comparing the firearms from the two games. This is said to be one of the biggest update Dying Light 2 ever had, so let's talk about everything one by one. The third thing you should do as soon as you load in the game is to get the free bundle. Not only it will give you some cool looking skins, but also the good old dark sickle from Dying Light. Although here it doesn't really look as stylish, but it's definitely a good weapon to have. Another free item you can get during the first week of this update is the Harang pistol alongside some ammo for it. Once you load into your game and wait a little bit, a character will call you and start a questline that will unlock guns. Now unfortunately because my game glitched out, I couldn't complete this quest and thus I couldn't get access to guns. Although in this glitch state, I couldn't take any damage and had infinite stamina, so I could make clips like these. And you know, despite not being able to get any guns, it was actually rather interesting exploring this glitched version of Villador. Once you complete the Lost Armory quest, if you manage to complete it, you will unlock a new agent that will give you 3 daily bounties and 5 weekly bounties. Now unfortunately I have no idea what these bounties are, but upon completion they will give you reputation points that will increase your level with this agent. Each time your reputation level with the vendor increases, the more items and guns you can buy from him. Although this obviously wasn't everything that was added with this update, because now we have much more side activities to do in Villador and the Central Loop. First of all, we have the Survivor missions. Now the Lost Armory quest actually walks you through these missions, but basically all you have to know is that the new missions appear every week and after completing it for the first time, you get reputation points and a special currency that can be used to buy guns. There's also an elite version of the same mission that unlocks after you complete it, and it's pretty much the same except you have more powerful enemies. Another addition are the bounty boards. Unlike the previously mentioned survivor missions, each bounty board features around four of its unique quests. Just like in Dying Light, the bounty board quests are very simple, as each of them basically requires you to getting some sort of item from a certain location. Although the good part is that instead of going back to the bounty board, you can just deliver them in one of the carrier's guild boxes. For completing these small side quests, you get legendary XP, a certain bonus item which is usually a throwable, and also a vendor crate. Once you open the crate, you receive a bunch of expensive crystals and legendary tokens that you can then exchange at a Craftmaster. One legendary token is equal to one legend XP point. But that's not all, as many bounties were added. Now there is an additional weekly bounty that is quite difficult, but rewards you with lots of legendary XP. Then if you visit the Techland GG website, you would notice that in addition to the 9 weekly bounties, you also get one additional bounty for specific community maps. But that is still not the end because Dying Light 2 is now 2 years old, and there will be a series of 4 additional weekly bounties that upon completion will give you rewards. So I will make a quick guide on how to complete the 4 bounties that are available this week. The first bounty will be to perform 10 finishers. In order to do that, I recommend using your fists in order to break the enemy stance and then perform the glory kill. The next bounty will be to chop off 50 enemy limbs. This is actually very easy to do if you attack the enemy's legs. The third bounty will be to survive 60 seconds under a night chase, which is also very simple. But the fourth bounty will require you completing the Run Boy Run community map. 
You don't need to get the gold medal in order to complete this bounty, but I will still show you how I got it in case you're having trouble completing this challenge. Once you complete all four of these bounties, you will get access to the newly added Scorpio weapon. The Scorpio is one of the many weapons added with this update, although, unlike all other guns, this weapon was supposed to be in Dying Light 2 since the beginning, but it got removed, and now it's back. At first, it looks like a regular two-handed hammer, but if you press the reload button, it will transform into a harpoon gun. The projectiles it's shooting deal tremendous damage and apply the bleed effect, meaning that if you score two headshots on a volatile, you can easily kill him. Although, you could only free aim this weapon, meaning that you will have to be very careful with your shots, especially because crafting harpoons is rather expensive. But overall, it's an amazing weapon that deals good damage in melee and ranged combat. Now, let's talk about the actual guns. As I previously said, I cannot get access to them, but from what I've seen while using the Haran pistol, is that the animations are much more smooth and satisfying, and the overall quality of the guns is better. And the final weapon change is that 11 more nocturnal weapon variations were added. Okay, we have weapons, but what about the enemies we're going to use them on? Well, if you didn't already notice, the majority of biters and virals were changed. Now they look much less cartoony and more like actual human beings. They now have quite a few blisters on their face, and some viral models make a return from previous updates. There was also another entirely new enemy added, and it is the Grenadier. It's simply a renegade tank with red painted armor that sometimes throws grenades at you. Player progression was also increased, as now the maximum legend level is 300, which means that you can get not only a new outfit, but also many skills that are unlocked after reaching legend level 250 and sound completely broken. For example, one of these skills will make you regen health based on the amount of damage you're dealing, which in the endgame will make you completely immortal. Then we have some very important bug fixes. You can no longer get the one-shot glitched weapons from the Carnage Hall DLC. So I really hope that you stocked up on all these weapons, because now there is no way to get them. Although I'm sure that eventually people will find another glitch. But one of these bug fixes was actually useful, as now you can loot crystal cores in Dark Hollows, 
And that's it for this week. Although during the next few weeks, we will have the ability to not only earn more rewards, but also meet with Tolga and Fatih. And I really hope that Teclan will fix the lost armory mission so I can make a video about all weapons. So that was all, thank you everyone for watching, remember to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.